everyone welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel my name is Marielle Sanchez and I am a fourth grade teacher in South Florida today is October 26 2020 it is the start of the second grading period second nine weeks I can't believe that already one grading period has gone by and we're actually in the last week of October so I wanted to kind of take you along with me throughout the week and just give you some highlights of what happened during the day. I'm coming to you in the morning during one of my planning periods. So I wanted to stop and just let you know what my lesson plans are for this week, what I plan to do with my students today and take it from there. So first and foremost, I shared a couple of videos over the weekend. One video was from week five that I hadn't been able to post. And I posted that and I shared pretty much a day in the life of virtual teaching. So if you haven't caught that video, make sure you catch it. I'll link it down below. And the last video that I posted this past week was on my digital writing lessons or virtual writing lesson that I did with my students last week. I've been sharing a couple of ideas about it on Instagram. And on Instagram, I also posted a freebie that I created for a Jamboard template for the bucketing the evidence strategy. If you don't know what that is, you might wanna check out the digital or virtual writing lesson video that I posted. I'll link it down below as well. And I'll also link the freebie down below in case you want to grab it for you it comes with six different frames for is basically one type of template done six different ways so let's get started with showing you my lesson plan templates basically i've been taking the same lesson plan templates that i've used in the past i tweaked them for this year a little bit but i am writing them in good notes so i saved it as a pdf i imported into my good notes and i've been using my apple pencil to write my lesson plans down so let me show you what i planned for this week in all subjects so right here is my ipad and this is the good notes app and i am just able to use my apple pencil i have the generation 2 because i have an ipad pro and I just, this is for my reading and language arts, so reading and language arts standards. And over here is everything that I wrote out for what we're going to do this week. In reading, we're starting with Wonders Unit 1, Week 3 this week. And in writing, I'm trying to wrap up the bike sharing program, which was the essay that we worked for the past two weeks. So I wanted to make sure that my students really understood how to write their body paragraphs. And I felt like I needed two more days to do that. And then I'll introduce the new writing prompt on Wednesday, which is our first informative essay prompt. This one is going to be guided. So we're going to be doing it part by part together. And I list my vocabulary words. So then I have my math, science, and social studies lesson plans. And these are blocked out because I don't teach science on Mondays and Tuesdays. And I don't teach social studies on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. So right here, I just have my domains and my bodies of knowledge. And this is what we're doing. We're trying to wrap up chapter two and then starting chapter three later in the week. For science, we are wrapping up with weathering and erosion, which goes paired with our reading wonders unit one, week three. And for social studies to this morning, we just wrapped up with chapter four and we're starting chapter five tomorrow. And these are our vocabulary words. Another thing that I wanted to show you is I also created this template so that I can kind of write down what I am doing every day as far as instruction goes. So what am I doing today in reading, in writing, in math, which is my next lesson for this morning. We don't have science today and what we did this morning for social studies. So we've already done social studies. Next is math. And after lunch, we're doing reading and writing. So I just wanted to go ahead and share that with you and kind of show you how I've been planning my lessons. And I actually just like doing good notes. I just grab my iPad and I start writing everything down. I could type it, but lately that's what I've been doing. It's kind of easy because I can take my iPad anywhere and it has Wi-Fi. So I'm always connected to the internet and I can look at the pacing guides to kind of see what our district wants us to be teaching that particular period. So for social studies, we went over chapter four, like I said, and the TCI curriculum brings a complete lesson guide, but I went ahead and I edited it. And this is something that I used last week to teach my students. And I love how I can edit and I can hide slides or I can change the text that's right up here. I can change it, but we're basically done with this chapter. What I did today with the students is we just kind of did a rundown of the different sections of the chapter. This was a, sh a very short chapter 
and we highlighted important information that they needed to know about Florida's geography. So we did that for all of the different sections in this particular chapter, and the students also have access to this textbook through their student portal, and they also have access to highlighting tools and note tools, etc. And after we did that, the students took a test, and their test is basically this one that I modified, and I was able to choose the multiple choice questions that I wanted to assess my students in, and they took it live with me this morning. So after we did the review, I had them log in, and they were taking it while they were with me in the Zoom meeting so I can give them feedback, and if students wanted to retake the test, which is something that I am doing for them, they were able to go ahead and do that at that point. So basically, pretty much everyone finished. And now I'm just waiting for math. So for math, we use Go Math. So I go into my Think Central, and this is basically how I've been doing my lessons. I start with the Math on the Spot video, which goes over a problem that they will see in their actual personal math trainer practice problems. And then I go along with them and I do the interactive math lesson. And what I do is I log in to the Zoom meeting with my iPad so that I can use the annotation tools. And as we're working out the problems, I can model and show them the steps to solving a problem through the iPad because I'm able to use my Apple Pencil and write on the screen. So that has been great. And then of course their assignment will be the math practice problems. So that's basically what I'm planning to do this morning. And then of course this afternoon, we are doing reading. And for reading, I created a new Jamboard template that I wanted to share with you. So if you have not used Jamboard before, it is one of the free tools in the G Suite or Google Suite. And I used it last week for the bucketing the evidence. This is the template that I said that I was giving away as a freebie. So you can grab it. This is the one that's already done. The one that I provide for you does not have the stickies on it. So this is how it looked before, but I kind of added the background and then I added the buckets. But what I wanted to show you is the new Spade reading strategy Jamboard template that I created. Spade is a reading strategy that my district uses that we are encouraged to use whenever we're reading any type of passage. And it stands for survey the text, predict analysis plus annotations equals close reading, dissect the questions, and evidence. And then I added these little icons to go along with each of those steps. Now, the nice thing is that we're gonna be using it for our Wonders unit, but I also created a sample one for the actual story that we're gonna be reading today so that you can kind of see how it is used in action. And if you never use Jamboard, it's very simple. This is a picture, an image that I just inserted. And then they have sticky note tools and you can get to write a sticky note. So I'm gonna put hello and you click on save and cancel and there's a sticky note and I can move the sticky note, I can resize the sticky note, etc. But I left it the same size and then I color coded it to each step of the spade process. So I'm just gonna delete this one and this is interactive because you can share the link with your students and they can actually create the sticky notes along with you. Now, of course, there's some guidelines and expectations that you need to go over with your students because they are able to delete other people's post-its. So it's very important you go over the expectations and you can share the Jamboard and then close it out when you're done so no one else can share. So this is for the story that we're gonna to read today or the passage. So when they start reading the text, the students are gonna find all these different text features and they're gonna know that it's informational text. Their predictions can look something like this based on the title and the text features that they observed and the genre. Analysis plus annotations equals close reading may look something like this, where they're going over the main idea, the text structure, the words that let you know the text structure and the dissect the questions. These are some of the questions they're going to, to be answering to, and this is to kind of let me know that these questions are all about text structure. And of course, this is all the evidence from the text that will help support whatever answers we write down for those questions. So I wanted to have this as an example so you can see what a completed Jamboard may look like or obviously can have more. And since this is very limited with how many stickies you can put, let's say for predictions, you can duplicate this frame and you can go ahead and 
make it available to other students. So you duplicate, I'm sorry, I didn't show you that. By going over here, you click on the frame to expand the view and you click on this right here with the three dots and you can click duplicate or delete. You can have multiple of these blank frames and then assign certain students to go to frame one or frame two so that you can have those students work individually or in a small group as they do the spade strategy in their reading lesson. Now, some of these strategies I knew by just playing around with it, but I learned a little bit more by attending Jen Jones' free Jamboard PD, which I'll link again down below so you can watch the replay. And yeah, it's a really great strategy. It's interactive. It adds engagement. So that's what I've been doing, and that's what I'm going to plan to do this afternoon during my reading lesson. All right, so I'll leave you for now, and I'll catch up with you at the end of the day to let you know any other highlights. It's now the end of the day and I just wanted to give you a quick little highlight of this afternoon. So basically the spade strategy was fine. It's not 100% the way that I expected it to go because you know with technology there's always glitches and there's things that happen. So some students were saying they weren't able to get in. So I would tell students once they posted their stickies to go ahead and leave so that other students can come in because there is a max capacity that could be at one time on a Jamboard. So I have 16 students in my class and I thought that we would be okay, but I, we still had some glitches. I see that some of my students were able to complete it and some didn't, so we'll keep working on it. It's a little play by ear as we go along, but what I ended up doing is what I mentioned earlier. I made a copy of the same frame four times and I divided my students into groups of four. I went ahead and I put their names at the upper right so that they can come in and they can just click next to the specific frame so they can add their post-its. So as you can see, we ended up doing, this is an extra frame that shouldn't be here. This is what happens too. Kids will you know, add extra frames and so forth. But what I did do, which is what I suggest you all do, once you are done with having students share their post-its, you should definitely go into share and lock it out so that no one else can make changes to it. But as you can see, this group put in their surveying the text, the text features they notice and the type of text, and they wrote their predictions based on that. The second group was also able to do it. All four did their predictions. And this is where we started having a little bit of hiccups. So I had one student that wasn't able, maybe not. Oh no, they did. It's just the post-it with, the sticky was hiding in front of that. So yeah, all of them were able to do that. And yeah, only one student was able to get into the last one because of some technical difficulties. But all in all, I mean, it went pretty well. Not 100% like, like I expected, but it did the job and I'm very happy with it. As far as writing goes, I went over that paragraph frame from last week and I let the students know you all need to revise it. So I stayed on a little bit after school waiting for students to finish revising their paragraph and see this is uh one that was revised and they make sure they had their transition their evidence from their text elaboration evidence elaboration elaboration so that we can have good paragraph writing for the body. This is an essential part to have students go back into their own writing and make revisions so that they start to understand, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. And I actually had a student say that. At first, he was not sure about what he needed to write, but as he kept getting feedback from me, he was like, oh, I think I know what to do now. And at the end, he ended up doing a great job. So very happy with my kiddos. It was a lot of work today. I was on this computer screen pretty much all day except lunch and my planning time. So I'm ready to go home. I'll see you tomorrow. Hello everyone, it is now Tuesday, October 27, 2020, and I am now coming to you about halfway through my day. I just had two lessons back to back this morning. That's what happens on Tuesdays uh, through Friday, pretty much. Mondays, I have like a little break. I have a lesson and then they I have a little break because the students have art. But on Tuesdays, I teach two back-to-back -back lessons and then they have PE. So my students are in PE right now, virtually. And I just wanted to give you a couple of highlights of what we did this morning. This morning, I introduced chapter five in social studies, which was a really cool chapter. It's a 
boat and a bus tour of Florida. So we get to go on a virtual field trip of different places around Florida. We start with the Everglades, and then from the Everglades, we move to Little Havana, Miami. And then from there, we move to the Kennedy Space Center, and we stopped. And I had the students, after doing that whole interactive lesson with videos and audio and visuals, go into Flipgrid and create a video sharing one of their favorite places from those three that we shared and three reasons why they like it. So I've been approving videos this morning and listening to them present. I love Flipgrid so much and I'll share a little bit more about it later. And then we did our math lesson, which was like a two in one because we were learning about multiplication with regrouping. And the same thing that I showed you yesterday that I do with my iPad, I did today, which is I just joined my Zoom meeting through my iPad. So I'm on there twice. And then I can start annotating on the screen as I share the screen from my computer. And that way I can do all the math modeling on my iPad with my Apple Pencil, which is so great. I love that. So yeah, now my next two lessons won't be until after lunch. So the students have PE right now. After that, they're having some I ready time. Then they have lunch. And after lunch is our reading lesson, which will continue from yesterday. And then our writing lesson for today. So just wanted to give you a little, you know, update of what we've been doing. I'll be sure to share Flipgrid with you a little bit later because I have to kind of do a screen what is it, uh, a screenshot of it, and then blur out our code, you know, the personal information, so that you can see how the topic looks. And hopefully in the future, I'll do a little video tutorial on Flipgrid. All right, so let me go back to planning, and I'll check back with you probably at the end of the day. It's the end of the day, friends, and I am exhausted and freezing. As you can tell, I had to put on a sweater. My room is super cold, whereas there are other classrooms in the school that are really hot. They're still trying to work with the AC problem there. But I wanted to kind of tell you how my afternoon went because sometimes we plan for lessons that don't go the way we expect, so we have to pivot and be flexible. So let's start with what I plan to do for reading. So yesterday I showed you the Jamboard with Spade, and today I found that Microsoft has something similar to Jamboard, which is Microsoft Whiteboard. Now, the Microsoft Whiteboard app on the computer itself has many options, like you can import an image for your background, you can resize it, you can lock it, which is awesome. That's something Jamboard doesn't have. But the web version of Microsoft Whiteboard doesn't have that, nor does it have the option, the web version, to, for you to resize your sticky and change the color, whereas the desktop app version of Microsoft Whiteboard does. So I tried to make this spade, you know, whiteboard. I shared it with the students. I made four different ones and I shared it with the students, four students per whiteboard. It just didn't work. And I told the kids, you know what? We're trying new things sometimes and we have to be flexible and know that, hey, sometimes things are not gonna work the way we expect. So it didn't work. So we just scratched it off and said, we're gonna go back to Jamboard. We're just gonna tweak it and change the way that we use it next time. We read the main, the main, no, the shared selection, which is a world of change. We talked about, let me pull it up so I can show you. So I pulled up the passage on the Wonders site and they have access to this through their Wonders e-textbook through their student portal. And as we read, we were annotating. So we were comparing and contrasting slow changes versus fast changes. That's what we decided just by looking at this uh, first paragraph. So this first paragraph, gave us so many clues and hints as to what we were reading about, as to the text structure. It was really cool. So then we understood, okay, so since we're going over slow versus uh, fast changes, this right here is sharing how slow and steady changes affect the planet. And they're talking about weathering, erosion, and deposition, which is what we've been learning about science. So it's awesome when reading and science coincide. And then this section is talking about fast and powerful, and we were looking at all the signal words, right, that let us know that we have compare and contrast. For example, like, but, and over here we have like volcanic eruptions, etc. in contrast over here. So we had a really good discussion about this passage and all the text features. We discussed the topic, the main idea, and I actually had students think of a summary, and they started writing their summaries which I told them, pay close attention because this is gonna help you complete your reading assignment 
which ended up being a Microsoft form that I have created for them to go ahead and work on. And if you don't mind me, I'm not looking at the camera because I'm opening it up for you. But here it is. So there's some simple directions there. They click on this, it opens up the Microsoft form, and they have a multiple choice question on the topic, on the main idea, and then they have a long response where they have to write a summary for the entire passage. Now I did let them know they can look back in their portal so that they can reread the passage and also get evidence from the passage to write their main idea. So that was our reading lesson, and then we went into writing. So for writing, I pulled up my PowerPoint, and give me a second, because I'm trying to open it up here for you. I kind of closed it. And we went over ways that we revise, as well as the ARM strategy, so we went over that. And we also went over ways that we edit all right, and the strategy for editing, which is we edit with cups, and this is my editing cafe. I made it up. I even got these cute little uh, icons that look like Starbucks cups. Now I'm craving Starbucks, and went over all the different ways that we edit. So after we did that, I went ahead and I shared some of the student written essays from two weeks ago when they did their bike sharing program, which was our baseline writing assessment. So I show them this one kind of works. This one is getting there, but needs more elaboration and stretching it out and making sure they have the organization of an essay. So I told them, okay, now it's time to write, rewrite our conclusions for the bike sharing program so we can be done with the bike sharing program and move on with informative essays. So I created a new Padlet on bike sharing essay conclusions. I wrote an example for the pro or two examples for the pro two examples for the con, and then my students started writing their examples. The ones that have my little hearts already read, that's that I like them because that's how I check off that I have done revising or giving them conferencing so that they know how to make it better. And I also included this image that they can click, and this is one of my slides on how they can start their conclusion paragraphs. Now this is a typo, this is supposed to be begin. You can begin, so I have to fix that. But anyway, I gave this to them so that they knew how to go ahead and proceed with writing their conclusions. Again, it's a work in progress, it takes time, conferring and giving feedback to the students, especially when there's only one of me and there's like 16 of them in a Zoom meeting. And sometimes you can have even more than that. I'm just blessed that I have a small class. And I know some teachers have close to 30 students or even more than that in a Zoom meeting. So. I'm very grateful, but it's a juggling act, trying to give feedback and let them know, hey, make sure that you have this in your conclusion and make sure that you have that. So it's a slow process, but this is how they're going to learn as they get into the habit of going back into their writing and making changes to their writing so that it has what they need to have. That's how they're gonna learn to write. But baby steps, we're still in October. I mean, it's the last week of October, but it's still pretty much the beginning of the year. This is just the second week, the second week, the second grading week of the school year. So, and these students, this is the first time they're actually writing to essays. And this is the second essay they write to this year. So little by little, we're getting there. So I'm very exhausted. I'm gonna get ready to go, maybe grab some Starbucks and have a nice rest of the afternoon. So I'll see you tomorrow, Wednesday. Hello everyone and welcome to Wednesday, October 28, 2020. I'm coming to you during the only break that I have today, which is lunchtime, because Wednesdays I teach lessons back to back. So I start the morning with reading, followed by writing shortly after, and then a math, and then we have lunch. And then after lunch, the students have their I ready block, and then we end the day with our science lesson. Just to give you an overview of how my morning has been, Take a look at all the tabs that are open on my computer. Which at some point there were more tabs open, but this is so reminiscent of how many tabs are also open in my head right now. But yeah, we were looking back at a world of change and we were basically focusing on text structure and we went into, and as we read read, I had the students be my little reading detectives and look for words that gave a hint as to the text structure that we were working with. Then when we were done working with that and locating the text structure and the signal words, we went to Padlet and I created a new Padlet where the students are comparing and contrasting. And this is one of those column Padlets again in this time, I put slow changes versus fast changes, which was what is being compared in the text. And in the middle, I put the similarities and I had the students just write down all the differences, how slow changes are different than 
fast changes, and then how they are the same. So I had all the students sharing. And then for writing, we went ahead and started looking at our informational essay. So I'm having a little bit of a problem with my Microsoft where my district hasn't updated the licensing, so I can't really use Microsoft Word. This is the web version. I can only just mainly just use the web version of it. But at least I was able to save the, from the web version to a PDF. So we actually worked with this PDF file because I really love the annotation tools at the top for highlighting and writing comments. We're not writing comments yet, but I told the students when you start a writing essay or an informative or uh, opinion text-based writing, you have to skip all the way to the prompt, which is all the way at the, at the end. And then we went ahead and we unwrapped the prompt. Now we didn't unwrap it right here on the PDF, but I did during Zoom have the students circle the keyword and underline the topic. And then we discussed whether it was a one part or a two part prompt. And then I went ahead with my annotation tools. I cleared their annotations and I actually wrote it out. I do have that saved. So let me show you that. So this is the screenshot that I took of that. So if you don't know, when you're doing Zoom, you can actually click save and it saves the screenshot of whatever your students were able to do. This is after the students did it. I went ahead and I circled our essay keyword, which is informative. So I know my purpose is to inform. The audience is the teacher, so we know we're doing academic writing. The topic is underlined, which is usually after the essay keyword, and it is a two-part prompt. So my task is why are rainforests important? Why do, should, well, that is a big typo. I'm sorry, I was doing this super, super fast. Why should they be preserved? So that is basically what we're working with as it relates to this essay. So we went ahead and we went back to source one and we started reading it. And as we were reading it, we were highlighting important information as it pertains to the prompt. So looking at why rainforests are important and why we should preserve them. And I also use this as a reading lesson because we talked about the bold face words, we talked about um, footnotes, so the students didn't know what footnotes were. So I told them, foot, these are footnotes. Where are your feet? At the bottom of the page. So that means you need to scroll to the bottom and see what it tells us. In this case, is a little bit of a definition of those words. So we went ahead and we read this entire source, which was two pages long. And then I had the students do annotations on a separate Padlet, which is right here. And basically they were responding to the source. And a lot of them got to write some interesting details and information that they learned from the passage. So that's where we wrapped up as far as writing goes. And then after writing, the students went ahead and took their math topic assessment and then it was time for lunch, which is where we are now. And we're gonna end the day with science. So I'll let you know at the end of the day how that lesson goes. And yeah, just giving you a little bit of an update as to what we're doing. And I can't say this enough, but I absolutely love Padlet, how versatile it is. And again, I, I'm still using the free version. My students don't have accounts. I literally give them the link. I tell them that in the title, when they put a new note, that's where they write their first name. And then where it says write, write something, that's where they write whatever it is that we're responding to. Love it, love it, love it. And oh yeah, this morning, before we started everything, I forgot to say, I read them a nice little read aloud because, you know, Halloween is just around the corner. It is this Saturday, as a matter of fact. So I learned about the book Creepy Carrots by Jen Jones, and I went in my Amazon and I bought the Kindle version. So I went ahead and I read that to the students to start our morning, and it was great because we were just talking about what was happening in the story and the illustrations, etc. So the students really, really enjoyed it. So here is the book Creepy Carrots. So I'm gonna open it up. I'm gonna go back to the beginning. Ooh. So you can see, so here it is. It's by Aaron Reynolds, illustrated by Peter Brown, and it's just a great story. So if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. All right, so I'm going to wrap up with my lunchtime and then I'll catch up with you at the end of the day. 
it's now the end of the day and I just wanted to say very quickly, our science lesson went pretty well. We did an interactivity uh, activity inside of their electronic science textbook that was guided and had a couple of questions. And then we watched a brain pop video on plate tectonics because the interactivity mentioned it and I wanted students to get a better understanding of it. And then we watched another brain pop video on erosion, looked at the lesson check at the end, which talked about someone who had a garden on a slope planted seeds, but it rained twice a week for a couple of weeks. And then the plants were not growing and she noticed the mud was at, down at the slope. So it was an example of erosion and the students had to explain that and then give a suggestion for the person on how they should have planted instead of planting down a slope, they should have planted in a flat land. So I gave them a little MS Teams, Microsoft Teams quiz, which is a form that they can just fill out within the assignment as their lesson check. And then a couple students asked me for some help on their math activity or lesson from yesterday, I believe. So I went ahead and did that. And now I'm wrapping up because I have a doctor's appointment to do a follow-up on my ankle. Remember that I have a fracture in that ankle? It's not 100%, it still hurts a little tiny bit when I walk, but we're repeating x-rays today. So let's see how that goes. I'll see you tomorrow. So it's not tomorrow yet, but I just wanted to give you a quick update because I just left my orthopedic office and my foot seems fine. The x-rays look well. I still have the fracture. The fracture hasn't fully healed and they have explained this to me before. It's one of those places where it doesn't get that much blood flow. So I might have that fracture for a very, 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 very long time. They said as long as it doesn't get displaced, which it doesn't seem like it is and it's fine. So the doctor told me I no longer have any restrictions and to start like exercising and getting back to my running and walk runs and jogs little by little to see how I feel. They do recommend some uh, physical therapy. So I'll try to see if I can book it and see if my insurance will approve it. So yeah, uh, again, my ankle is not 100%, but he said, well, your ankle has been through a lot. It's not the ankle you were born with. <laughs> it's so true. So I just have to give myself grace as it comes to my healing journey and then just try to get back to little by little to what I enjoy, which is exercising and working out, which is good for my mental health. And let's all face it, we all need things that are good for our mental health right now, whatever that is for you. But because my doctor's office is right across the street from my favorite paleta place, which is gourmet popsicles, I'm going to get a passion fruit popsicle that is filled with sweet condensed milk. And I'm going to get little, uh, what is it, um, spicy sugar on the side so I can dip it in there. And that's going to be my little treat for today. Yay, hump day. My little treat for making it halfway through the week and making it through this journey of getting my ankle back to some semblance of what it used to be. It's never going to get back to what it was a long time before. Anyway, let me go ahead and do that. And now back in the car so I can enjoy this paleta in peace. I mean, look how beautiful it looks. I already showed it to you. But let me, let me just take a quick little bite of this. It is so delicious. Check that out. Yum. Mmm. Take a look. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Ooh, it's nice and cold. And as you can see, there's the sweet condensed milk, and right now it's kind of a little solid, but it'll like melt as I go along. And then I dip it in the, in the spicy sugar, and it's just bliss. All right, so I'm gonna keep enjoying my paleta, and now I'll definitely see you tomorrow. Good morning, it is now Thursday, October 29, 2020, Friday Eve, and I'm coming to you from the morning lesson break because we just finished our reading lesson this morning, and I tried Nearpod for the first time with this class and just wanted to see how it will go. We got through halfway through our lesson and then I said, okay, we'll continue tomorrow, but I'm trying to engage them a little bit more 
and also have part of their assignments that I want them to complete instead of them completing it on their own, which I'm finding that some students are not completing all the assignments, I'm trying to embed them within the live lesson so that that way they can get like a participation grade in or I can grade their submissions in the Nearpod so that they complete those assignments that they would have completed asynchronously. So it's almost like if I'm doing a synchronous and asynchronous lesson all in one, but while we're in Zoom. I'm just trying to find different ways to help my students complete their assignments because it just pains me so much to give them like an incomplete or a missing grade because they're not doing the assignment. It's not because they don't know how to do it or they don't understand it. It's just that they're not completing it. So it's not all of them. It's just a few that, and my teacher heart cannot let that happen. So I'm just trying to help them the best way I can. But this is my Nearpod lesson for today. Maybe I can just give you a glimpse into it. So I signed into Nearpod with my district credentials and I just have the silver account, but if I can just click preview so that you can kind of see how it is and yeah, Nearpod gives you like related content on the side, but this is the preview and I can just show you what we went over. This is a PowerPoint and I just saved it as a PDF so that it preserves the fonts that I used. And I just uploaded that into Nearpod as slides that I'm using. So I'm going over all my standards, our essential question. I went a little too fast. So that's our essential question. That's our weekly concept and wonders. And those are the words. And then I have the students draw a picture of something that is unpredictable. That's one of our vocabulary words. And then they had to draw a picture that represents a hazard. And then we went over our ideas, context clues, little acronym, the genre. We went over text structure because we're going over that. That's one of the standards we're going over. And we started using our spade strategy, which is survey the text. So we were looking at all the text features and uh, taking a look at them to kind of give us an idea of what the text would be about. And then we had an open-ended question that the students answered which is what text features that you find as you survey the text so they share that and i'm able to see what everybody shares at once they had another open in the question which is the genre so what they infer the genre was based on what they observed in the survey of the text and how do they know so all of them pretty much knew it was informational text and then the third open in the question was what do you predict the passage will be about so they all share their predictions and i was able to see that and we stopped right here which is to read the passage notice this is slide 30 out of 46. it just took time to have the students draw their pictures which i did put a timer on and i had to also wait for them to submit their open in the question answers and tomorrow we'll just read the main selection but at least now they kind of have an idea of what it will be about we also had some interesting conversations of earthquakes and tsunamis since we read the subheadings and we saw the pictures so yeah now they're having a little break and we're going to have our writing lesson next all right everyone so it is now the end of the day the students are in music or should be going to music in a couple of minutes and I just finished teaching all the lessons. So after I last left you, we did our writing lesson, which I also did in Nearpod, and I'll show you that in a moment. We didn't completely finish through that one either because I wanted to give the students a time to complete the graphic organizer for gathering the evidence for the first source, and then we read the second source. Didn't have time to gather the evidence for that one, but we will tomorrow. And then we went ahead and had our math lesson, which was an introduction to the next chapter. And I just finished the science lesson, which was the last one of the day. So let me start by going over Nearpod. And can we please take a moment to see all the tabs that are open, so many tabs. But this is part of the science lesson. I took them to Nuzella, but let me just go to Nearpod so you can see uh, the writing lesson. And what I just did is the prompt that we unwrapped yesterday, the image. So we went over unwrapping the prompt and then I had the students recall what we read from the first source and all the important information that we had highlighted together. And then this is our graphic organizer that our district puts together for us. So I went ahead and I created as a draw it activity. As you can see, the draw it tools are down here. And the students can choose the text box, move the text box into 
place, resize it, etc. And they can type in their answer to why are rainforests important as they learned from the first source. The cool thing is they can also change the size of the font there. They can click out and then choose it again to then write a second text box down here where they're going to write about why they should preserve rainforest. Now, for you, it looked like it took up the entire screen, but for me, when I was showing it to the students, I was able to see everyone's responses and it also records their responses so I can see what they had written. So tomorrow, when we go over saving the rainforest, they'll be able to fill in this part. So we read that second source, which is right here, and it just ends with a tiny little bit of a sentence and a half over here. And that's where we end it. So tomorrow, we're gonna go into allowing the students to annotate. So they'll have a dry activity where they can, one second. Yeah, this is a dry activity where they can choose the highlighter and they can highlight different parts of the text, as you can see that I'm doing here. And I can see what they are highlighting as well. They can also write a text box and maybe write an um, annotation. Sorry, I'm trying not to like uh, multitask here while I'm holding the camera. And um, again, they can click on that box and move it around, move it around, here we go, and put their annotation there. So there's different things that they can do with the dry it. So I also gave them access for the next one. And then we are going to do a little bit of a collab where they are going to post. So they get to share their thoughts and comments or images about this. So let's add text evidence that shows why rainforests are important and why we should pres uh, preserve them. And then we'll see what we collaborate with that. And they'll have this graphic organizer again as a dry it where they can now write a text box over here based on saving the rainforest, why are rainforests important, and why we should preserve them. And that is pretty much the end of the writing lesson. Again, I'm just trying it out with the students because I like the engagement. I'm able to see that they are working on it. They're paying attention. They're responding to what I'm teaching them. So I really like that there's many different options for them to engage. So yeah, really like Nearpod. Nearpod is pretty cool. So then for science, I took them to Discovery Education and we worked on this virtual lab. So at the beginning, it gives you a little introduction, a little problem about a park that's having an erosion problem. And we went to level one. Tomorrow we'll probably do level two. And we get to change the soil treatment, the amount of water that could possibly fall and how the incline should be. And then as we conducted each trial, in the results, they gave us a chart, a table, with all the results so that you can see the best one was for the soil treatment to be plants and the incline low, and that will help the park reduce the amount of erosion. And then we went ahead and went to Nuzella and read this article uh, by Nuzella and the National Geographic. So it reviewed rock cycle as well as weathering and erosion. And then I took students to polls everywhere. Now I only have the free version of polls everywhere. And what I just had the students do was write one word that describes something related to weathering and erosion that they learned about. And they created an amazing word cloud to kind of put into perspective what weathering and erosion was all about. So it was a really neat activity and that's how we ended the day. So right now I'm gonna work on my planning time and if I have anything else to share, I'll share it at the end of the day. If not, I will see you tomorrow Friday. Hello everyone, it is now Friday, October 30th, 2020, and I'm coming to you at the end of the day. It's been a very long day filled with all this learning and lessons and activities and Minecraft, because the end of the day, I just finished playing Minecraft with a couple of students that were done with all assignments and they had some free time and we played Minecraft, so it was really fun. So the other students that couldn't join the Minecraft world, they could do any other free activity. So it was almost like virtual recess. But this morning, we started with our science lesson on weathering and erosion, we're wrapping it up. So we went ahead and read a Nuzella article on weathering. It had an infographic of the different types of weathering. And then I used a flip chart that our district gave us to use on Active Inspire. And this is how it looked. So this is the flip chart, and we basically started by going over here. These were all 
over here and let me use my pointer. These were over here and the students helped me categorize them and sort them into whether they were weathering or erosion. So that's what the students were able to create. And then we went ahead and created this, which is explaining how the Grand Canyon is an example of weathering and erosion. So the students share their answers in the chat and then I pretty much put together all the answers they shared into one answer. And we played this categorizing game, which is an active inspire activity where you just click let's play. And we had to categorize these into where it goes as far as if it's weathering or erosion. So that's what we did. And then we ended the lesson with this exit ticket where the students gave me some examples of weathering and erosion. So that was our science lesson. And with math, we wrapped up lesson 3.1 and the students were able to complete their personal math trainer problems through Go Math Think Central. And they did it asynchronously while they were on camera. And then after that, they had PE, they had iReady, they had lunch. And then we finished our Nearpod lesson that I showed you yesterday for reading, which is the earthquakes. So we read earthquakes, which is from unit one, week three. And after that, the students took their selection tests asynchronously where they were on camera on our Zoom meeting. And then after that, we went over an elections article from New Zella comparing both candidates because on Monday we're going to have a student mock election. And I just wanted to have the students look at that. And we ended with a vocabulary week in rap. So then the students were off to complete assignments that they hadn't finished yet since everything is due by today. And the students that were done with everything had some free time, etc. So that's basically our week. Woo, I brought you with me all throughout this week. I hope you enjoyed being with me and it was nice to be able to create this kind of vlog where I tell you what we've been doing every day. So now we have a weekend where we have to change the time. Tomorrow's Halloween, which I'm looking forward to just celebrating with my family. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought or any questions you may have. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful, magical day and don't forget to smile. Hello, dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.